Welcome to Leesburg's Parks and Recreation Show. I'm your host, Claudia Verga. Soon, Leesburg will be hosting the fourth annual Walk for Animals. This popular event raises money for local animal rescues and non-kill animal shelters. Our guests today are Jennifer Magabro, Leesburg's Assistant Director of Parks, Joanne Ball, President of Greyhounds Pets of America, Senior Sanctuary of Florida, with her Greyhound, Brenda Lee, and Joanne Rittenhouse from Florida Boxer Rescue with her boxer, Call. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you. So great to see you all here. Jennifer, why is Walk for Animals so important? It's our big opportunity as a city and a Parks and Recreation Department to, to raise funds and awareness for our local animal rescues, um, to get you know our citizens involved. And, and plus, it's just a fun event, a fun event for everyone to bring their families, including their four-legged family members, to come out and have a good time while they're helping us raise some money. Now, you have mentioned that it helps animal rescues. Who does it exactly help? We've got a number of animal rescues that directly benefit from the walk. Um, we've got the Senior Greyhounds, we've got Florida Boxer Rescue, uh, we've got Humane Society of Lake County, Max's Pet Rescue, Hound Haven, um, we've got the South Lake Animal League. So there's, there's quite a few Hospice Pet Peace of Mind program. They're all affiliated with, uh, with the Walk for Animals program. What is it just, you know, when you think of rescues, most people just think of cats and dogs. Are there other animals that are also being helped? Yes, actually we have, um, it, the rescue is called APES, and that stands for Animal Preservation Education Sanctuary. And it's actually a rescue for uh, more zoo type animals that have either been retired or they're just not desirable because they're a non-breeding animal, um, you know, for the species survival program. And uh, so they come out with their Siamian monkey, Jasper, raising money for their rescue. And we also have a new addition, uh, Plantation Horse Rescue, that'll be there this year. And they'll actually be there with one of their Shetland ponies. That's fantastic. So Jasper's coming back for a third appearance yes, this year. Yes, he is. I'm yes. so excited. I can't wait. Um, how does Walk for Animal, how does it actually help these particular um, rescues? Um, Joanne and Joanne would probably be better to answer that, being affiliated with those rescues. Great. We'll start with Joanne. How are you? Hi. How are you? Um, it, this will be the first year that it'll be for Florida Boxer Rescue that will be in, involved in the event, although I've been there a couple, the, all the years uh, with Paul's Therapy Dogs. Um, but this year, we're going hope to hopefully make some money. And also, we hope to get more exposure in Lake County. We do cover 23 counties throughout Florida. But we want to get more exposure in Lake County, and we'd like to get more fosters. I don't know what we need more, foster families or money. We could use both, so uh, it'll help us out a great deal. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your wonderful organization? You said it's in 23 counties, and it just is it just for boxers? Just boxers, yes. Okay. And, and in 2011, we took in 350 boxers and rehomed them. And our vet bills were $299,000. But... Um, the only bills that we have is our vet bills. We, everybody's fostered, uh, foster parents, myself included. We supply everything except for the vet bills, and, and Florida Boxer Rescue pays all the vet bills. Um, so, you know, we, we can use uh, foster homes up here. We can use volunteers up here. We always need volunteers to do home inspections uh, and just help us with events, set up events and stuff. So, um, for a foster home, what are they expected to do for the dogs? They're expected, um, most cases, the dog already is trained, but sometimes they've been outside all their life and, and they don't know what it's like to be an inside dog, so they might need to be housebroken. Um, we get deaf dogs from time to time. Carl's a deaf dog. Uh, so they need somebody to take some time and show them some sign language so that they can be a good pet. When you say, you know, that he could read sign language, I couldn't believe it. It's amazing. Hopefully we'll get to show a little bit of that. Right now he seems to be rela yeah, he's relaxing. <laughs> he's relaxing. He's relaxing. He has no TV nerves whatsoever. No, no. <laughs> and on top of that, uh, even though he's deaf and he can sign and he's special in that way, he's also special in another way, correct, Carl? Yes, he is a therapy dog. And uh, he's with Paws Therapy Dogs, and he goes into schools and nursing homes, and he works at the National Deaf Academy. He's a volunteer, and um, he does a reading program. Children read to him. We also do humane education. And over the summer, we saw 1,187 children, 
And the humane education program we did is through South Lake Animal League and Florida Boxer Rescue and Paws Therapy Dogs. And we go in and talk to children about being safe around dogs, being a responsible pet owner, and spaying and neutering. We can't say spay and neuter enough. Um, so the, the Paws Therapy Dogs and the therapy dogs do a lot of work in the community. That sounds like a wonderful program. And Joanne, tell us a little bit about your uh, your shelter. Uh, we are Greyhound Bets of America, and so we are affiliated with the National, but it's Senior Sanctuary of Florida. And we deal only with the senior Greyhounds, those over seven, and they have either already been in homes, or in the case of Brenda Lee, she was a brood mom, excuse me, and uh, we picked her up at a farm in Ocala. I personally picked her up. We bring her to um, our one of the homes because we don't have a shelter. And she was uh, spayed and had a dental and uh, all her shots. Now she was adopted through our website, which is gpaseniorsanctuary.org, and you can go online and see all of them. And uh, she was adopted in Wildwood to a very nice home and had a good home there for about a year. And with the agreement, uh, if there's any reason that they can't keep the dog, they call us. And unfortunately, they had a death in the family and they had to return her. So we, no problem. We take her back. Uh, she's on our website, but uh, she's 13, so some people might find that a little older, but they can help us with our vet bills because all our fundraising does go for veterinarian care. And just uh, like Joanne, our foster program, we pay for the veterinarian care. And we have some great doctors throughout Florida that give us a, a discount. But um, that's our main concern are the, those costs. A foster can be in a home for anywhere from two weeks to a year, uh, depending on the, the situation. Uh, but they're mostly all housebroken. The older uh, greyhounds are very docile. They're not a hyper breed, not a barking breed. Um, they, they just want to be loved. Uh, I have four cats at home, so I have five dogs, and they're all good with the cats. So, though there are some that are not good with cats, because I think of them as a rabbit at the at the track, <laughs> and they want to take off after them. They right? yes, <laughs> but we know that ahead of time. Uh, anyway, we look to certain activities to raise funds. Every weekend, we have these meet and greets at Petco or PetSmart in the villages, and different locations that are listed on our website. But the Walk for Animals is probably one of our largest fundraisers. Uh, and even though the money do is raised here and stays in Lake County, though we have dogs all over, uh, it really benefits us. And the hard work that, uh, that Jennifer is doing to make sure we have another successful year is really important. We're gonna have a lot of dogs there um, on the 20th. We'll have also things to sell for fundraising. Uh, we have a c homemade collars by three dog collars that are all hand done by someone that we that uh, makes contributions to us. We sell everything from uh, t-shirts to, well, you name it. And every penny that we can raise goes for the veterinarian uh, care. Uh, I'm a volunteer. We have a lot of volunteers. We're always looking for more volunteers. So if some people think in their hearts, well, maybe, you know, this particular breed of dog, which is I say one of the easiest ones, low maintenance. If they're interested in helping us out, whether it's fostering or just helping us at, at our events, it would be great. And that's what we count on, the great advertisement, uh, the great fundraising, and the support we get by this event. And um, we're really excited about it coming up. And being in the stadium, I think, is going to be even uh, a more uh, friendly uh, environment to to show show off the dogs and and show off the uh, all the other great activities that will be going on that day. And Brenda Lee is going to will she be at the walk this year? She will. She will. She may not make the whole walk. Uh, I know it's only a mile, but. Uh, but we will have walkers and um, and she'll be available for adoption too. If yes. somebody has the heart she, for that, right? She is a she's in good Beautiful health. Dog. She's a loving girl. She's great with the cats, and she just. She's kind of shy right now, so you see the other side, but she's got the most beautiful <laughs> big uh, pool eyes, uh, and she's a love bug. So. She's very loving. Very, very sweet. Loving. Thank very you sweet. very much. Now, both of you have mentioned foster homes, and we talked about what it is to foster. Do you have criteria? Is there a certain requirement that somebody be home a set amount of hours? Like, what 
Let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, uh, we do ask that an application be filled out, and, they, and we have them online or we have them at the meet and greet. And the application is quite lengthy, and you ask a good question because it's not that we're trying to be picky, but because these dogs are older, there are certain needs. Um, we also have a, a I'll get into, um, if someone's gonna be working, 12, 14 hours and leaving the dog. It isn't good for the dog and it, and it won't work for us. We also, if, if you have a baby in the family, we cannot place a dog that it, where the children are younger than five years old. But we ask you to fill out an application and then we do a home visit. And we don't just come for a short little time. We try, we bring a dog, we go through things and make sure that you're comfortable and that the dog is comfortable and in a good environment. We don't require a fenced in yard, but it does help because these are former racers and they just cannot be left off mm -hmm. the lead. Uh, unlike uh, other breeds that might like to go chase a dog, uh, excuse me, not a dog, a, a toy um, or a car or whatever, uh, <laughs> some dogs, most dogs come back. Uh, these are sight hounds and they'll just keep on running and you won't be able to catch them. So yes, there's a selection process, but it's it's really um, just to help the individual decide whether this is the right foster for them. But also the person can call me or our group 24 hours a day. So we're you're not just getting a dog, you're getting a support group. Right, and if somebody has a situation where they're getting a home visit and it doesn't feel like a good fit for them, maybe they can volunteer instead. Absolutely, Absolutely. Yes. right? And we yes. have that, that's that's a very good point. Because you can still spend time with the beautiful breed, but mm -hmm. then you're not responsible for it all <laughs> yes. the time. Yes, and yes. so it's a win-win for everybody. And there's Would always you... a lot of work to do. Uh, following up with phone calls and doing home inspections, um, fundraising, events. Uh, and even if you don't have a foster dog and you can go to the event, you can pick up a foster dog from somebody else and take that dog to the event. Yeah. So there's always a lot to do. Yeah, transportation, taking the dogs to the vet. Um, and one of the things a lot of people don't like to do, but with boxers, you have to go to animal control and take a dog out of there. Um, when animal control calls and says, hey, we got a dog, can you come and get it? I don't know, a greyhound. Yes, we do, do you? That, okay. exactly. They're and supposed to call us when they do. get a greyhound, because, uh, um, and we take them immediately. Yes, yeah, no questions asked. If it's a boxer, we take it. Okay, so at, for, for some people, I just want to be clear, uh, at animal control, eventually, if the animals aren't picked up, they, they could not, they could they be, be euthanized. Euthanized. Yes. So you, what they do is they call you and then you go in and rescue them. That, yes. that would be, on one hand, it's a, a good experience yet, on the other, you're seeing all the other animals that's, that are there. That's the hard part. Yeah, it is. To go that in is. there that, and, and to see all the other ones you're not taking. That's why it's important to have your pets neutered in, in speed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And microchipping. And, and identification. Yes. yes. As we had a dog that was picked up in over in Citrus County and, th and they, the county called us and it was so good. The dog had been running loose and uh, it had a tag on it so they knew to call us. But uh, identification or chipping is chipping so vital. Is. Yeah. And every dog that you adopt from Greyhound and also from Florida Boxer Rescue will be spayed and neutered, up to date on all its shots and be up to date on all its health, whatever it needs, it, it gets. Um, and also they will be microchipped. And we know, it, we, we kind of do a process with every dog. We know if they're good with children, we know if they're good with cats, we know if they're good with other dogs. So it's a, um, it's a good situation. A lot of people look at rescue animals as second class citizens and they're really not. Uh, they're actually better than going to a, a pet store mm -hmm. or going to a breeder. Um, I, not that breeders are bad, um, but there's a lot of dogs out there that need a home. And um, look at your shelters, look at your kill shelters, um, and look at your rescue groups, because you can get a wonderful dog. But, you know, a lot of people don't realize you can get a full-bred dog at yeah. a rescue. Right. And like you said, like you mentioned, the first, what was appealing to me is you said you know whether they're good around kids, you know yes. if they're good around cats. And when you get a puppy or some other animal or... You, you're taking it home and you don't know what to expect. Yeah, and you're hoping you have for no the best idea. of the personality. Yep, yes. And here you have somebody who's already... They've already done the hard job. They're yes. already, yeah, yeah, they're already qualifying them for you and to see if they're a fit. So I would definitely recommend that people visit our shelters first. Look how cute they are. <laughs> and we, we do get puppies home. in. You know, we do, we get from time to time, too? yes, we do get puppies, and we have a puppy waiting list, so, so if you want a, a puppy, we can, we can handle puppies. And we also work with other rescue groups, other um, boxer rescue groups throughout the state. If you're approved for Florida Boxer Rescue, you're also approved for Bark Rescue, and you're approved for Coastal Boxer Rescue, so we work together. 
Now, right. Joanne, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you and your association, how would they contact you? www.flbr.org, floridaboxandrescue.org. Okay, and any phone number? Do you have a phone um, number? Or? The phone number is on the, on the website. On the website. Yeah. Okay. And we also have it on the Walk for Animals oh, yes, website. Yes. For Fantastic. Both, for all of our rescues. Yeah. And we have and a great Facebook page. You gave out your website page. already. Do you have a phone number you want to give out to well, them? Well, um, uh, there is a number on there, but it's 352-728-2839. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, memorable moments from last year's walks. Do you have any you want to share today? Um, I, last year was my first year as a participant. I wasn't organizing it last year. And so I got to enjoy it, bring my dogs. And I thought it was just wonderful to have all these rescue organizations um, in one spot, amicable. I mean, everybody knows everybody. Like, you two already knew each other. The, the goal is just to help these animals, and that's great. To be in an environment with everybody else there loves animals. You're there with homeowners, you know, with their dogs, loving on their dogs, or, or looking for an adopted animal. It was just a very good environment. It was a lot of fun to be with people with similar interests. Yeah. I would imagine it's hard to see all the um, adoptions that are available it is. and have to walk away. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> well, that's what we're banking on. That you yeah, <laughs> I do. I'll go home with 10 of them. No. Uh, so the, the ladies kind of gave it away a little bit earlier that we're going to be in a new location this yes. year. So let's talk about that. Uh, we're going to be at Pat Thomas Stadium this year, which is still in Venetian Gardens. Uh, it's just on the other end of the park near where the boat ramp is. Um, it's a, a little bit safer venue um, in the fact that the whole area is fenced in. So if we do get a runaway, he's not going very far. Of course, then you have the whole rest of the ball field to try and <laughs> tackle your <laughs> dog. Fun, but though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's all fenced in. We've got a lot of room to spread out. We've got restrooms there at the facility. Um, the boosters, the high school boosters, they're going to run the concessions. So we'll have all the concessions there. Uh, for you know, if you want to grab a sandwich while you're there, there's seating. We've got an outdoor deck with tables and chairs for you to sit at. Um, we're also going to have a small area set aside for off-leash area if you want to take your dog, uh, almost like a dog park where you can let them off their leash to run around. Um, you know, because a lot of people don't have big yards to do that. And the dog park is on the other side of town, so while they're at the event, let your dog get some exercise and play. Um, it's just just going to be a, a real nice venue, I think, and, and hopefully it'll be nice and cool. With it being on October 20th, we're hoping maybe a little cool front will come in. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a fantastic event. Now, with the new location, where will the parking be this year? The parking is all throughout that area, and I'll have signs designating parking areas. Uh, so there, there won't be any guessing, but there's plenty of parking area there in Venetian Gardens, over by the pool, by the stadium, the marina, the boat ramp. So parking shouldn't be an, an issue. And we just said the date, correct? Yes, October 20th. And that's a Saturday? Yes. And yes. what time does it start? Uh, it's going to be from 9 a.m. to noon. And uh, the breakdown of events, of course, registration is all going to be at 9. So we're encouraging people, you know, come there early while it's cool out. Uh, we'll have coffee and pastries being served at concession area if you want to have your breakfast there and sit down and enjoy your morning cup of coffee with your dog. Um, with the registration, we'll have all the vendors and rescues already set up. We'll have face painters. Uh, we'll have some demonstrations going on. Then at 10 o'clock, we have an animal blessing with uh, Deacon William Fisher. So he'll take the microphone and, and give a blessing for all the animals there at the, at the uh, event. Um, then there'll be more demonstrations and, and more opportunities for people to go see the vendors. Then at 11 o'clock, we'll do the actual walk itself which will be a one-mile walk around Venetian Gardens. Okay. Um, and then the, the program technically ends at noon, meaning that's when our rescues and our vendors can go ahead and pack up. But we're not going to be kicking people out. Um, like I said, we've got the boosters doing the concessions. So we encourage people, go ahead and get a chicken sandwich and, and sit and hang out and enjoy our beautiful Florida weather with your dog. Now, you had mentioned the vendors. Um, are the, any of their proceeds being donated back yes. to the cause? Yeah, all of anybody involved with this event um, does a, uh, a sponsorship donation to the animal rescues. Everything from this event goes to the rescues. You know, I, I'm organizing the event, but other than that, you know, all our wonderful sponsors have, have been paying for everything to do with this event. Um, I've got Ford Press printing the flyers. 
bless them because that is that's a lot a big more. Expense. Yeah, it's yeah. a bigger expense than you would imagine. I've got sign crafters doing a banner for us. Um, I've got a um, a groomer doing nail nail clippings at the event. I mean, it's just wonderful how the community really supports helping these animal rescues. Now, what happens? So we can shop and yes. donate back. Yes. <laughs> and Shopping with the cause. There will be little giveaways, too. I've got Karen's Canine Kitchen giving little sample bags of all her little treats. And she says it's a little sample bag, but I know last year it, it was a good size. Yeah. It was a pretty significant amount of different types of dog treats and goodies. Uh, and that's just that's just one of the ones who will have that. PetSmart's going to be out there with all their little goodies and giveaways and toys. Last so. year, a lot of the vets uh, donated heart guard and, and heart, uh, heartworm medicine, and uh, so that was really big help for the rescues because we have to pay for all that stuff. Yeah. Right, that's wonderful. So we we have shopping, we have free mm -hmm. tr free uh, treats, and, and we're going to have a kissing booth. A kissing oh, I booth. Yes, we're going to yes. have a kissing booth. Yes. Tell uh, me about that. The um, therapy dogs will, including Carl, will be manning the kissing booth, <laughs> and all the money that we raise will go to Florida Boxer Rescue. And Carl is a great kisser. I want to kiss. <laughs> How come he hasn't kissed me yet today? <laughs> he will. He's not done yet. All right. Okay. That's on the patio. I saw him out there at the kissing booth. Yes. Kissing yeah. booth. I love that. That's fantastic. I'm coming just for a kiss now. Look at that. Um, we keep talking about for, bring your four-legged friend, your family member. Mm -hmm. What happens if I don't have a dog, but I want to come and walk and raise money? Well, if you want to get a hold of any of our rescues, I'm sure they've got fosters that they'd be more than happy to let you walk while you're there. And of course, if you don't already have a dog, we can take know, care of that. <laughs> you know, we're going to you're find coming to one the right for place. You. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, if somebody's coming with the intention to hopefully adopt. Mm -hmm. What would they need to bring with them that day? They cannot adopt on site. Okay. None of us That's will right. adopt on site. That's so, right. what, because you have to do the home visit, right? And they have to and, fill and out the application. And we also call their vet. Okay. We do a follow up with their vet to make sure that they really do take their dog or their cat, whatever they have now, to a vet. Um, we do want some references. So it'll take a couple days, but all, all the rescues that'll be there will be operating the same way. Um, you can see exactly. all the animals that we have, but we will not adopt on site. Do, is there anything that they have to bring besides filling out the application? Do they have to, you know? If they have another pet, that might be a good idea to bring the pet and see how it gets along with our fosters that are there. Okay, so they don't need to bring their driver's license or anything that day? Oh, no. no. Okay. Okay, so just fill out an application and let you guys do your natural process. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, let's talk about if I'm going to raise money, mm -hmm. how do I do that? There's a number of ways, and, and we're not really very structured with that in terms of you can only do it with a pledge sheet. Uh, we've got people who just write us a check that may not even be able to make it to the event, and they make it out to walk for animals. Um, we've got them where they give checks to the rescues, who will in turn give it to myself towards the, the event. Um, also, there are pledge sheets on our website where you can go out and you can raise money, uh, you know, going up to people, listen, I'm participating in Walk for Animals, uh, would you care to sponsor me? Uh, you can do it that way. Uh, just call us up or check the website. We're more than happy to figure out a way for you to, to help these rescues. Tell me what it is to make a pack. The packs are where we get a group of people raising money. And we have quite a few neighborhoods in the past that have done that. They'll have a, a pack of people who, who generate you know, sponsors. And uh, they'll come in and walk together. But we also have a, an elementary school that's forming a pack. I was oh, told. Oh, great. Yeah. And so the kids are out raising money. And if there's, I, I don't know what's more irresistible is, is a dog like Carl, and then you've got, a, you know, an elementary school aged child. I'm raising money for Walk for <laughs> Animals. I don't know how people can say no to that. <laughs> so we're, we're really excited about the schools getting involved because that's, that's just great to have kids involved with, with animals and, and taking the initiative to support rescues. Um, that's just showing good good morals and ethics right from the start. So there's plenty of ways to participate. You can be an individual, you could just make a donation, you could create a team, you could do a corporate sponsorship yes. like you mentioned early. Um, how much does it cost? Is there a minimum to participate in the event? Not really, no. We'll, we take anything. 
Uh, we do have sponsorship levels, you know, especially for the corporate sponsorships, 50, 100, 250, 500. That's just the varying levels of, of sponsorship. So when you hear that we have a platinum sponsor, that's somebody who's given $500 towards this event, which is, is great. You know, we, we, love, we love promoting people as platinum sponsors. But uh, no, we will take anything. Now, you had mentioned, is that listed on the website? Yes, the it is. Different sponsorship levels. Mm -hmm. And what is the website? It is uh, www.walk4animals.com. Now, I don't have to have an animal. You can provide me with an animal, but yes. do I have to donate or raise money to participate? Um, not necessarily, of course. This is a, a family-friendly event. You know, we want you first and foremost to come out. We want to raise your awareness. We want you to know there are these local rescues, and this is all that they do to help these animals. So we really want you to be educated, because if you're educated, you will be giving, because you realize they need it. Mm -hmm. So, But first and foremost, we just need you to come out. We want you to have a good time. We want you to bring your dog. Now, we know Jasper the Ape's coming, and... We have a pony, right? A pony, yes. A pony, and we have our four-legged friends. Yes. Are there any animals in particular that we should not bring to the event? I am actually not going to restrict that. No, I, I would be more than happy to have somebody bring a pot-legged, a pot-bellied pig in. <laughs> really? I would love to see that. I used to see we'll someone. We'll stick him in the kissing booth. Yeah, that would be great. Um, I signed great. up for call. Okay. okay. <laughs> I believe last year we had somebody bring a cat in a stroller yes. type yes. Uh, enclosure, and that's fine too. I mean, just realize what your animal's um, tolerance is. If you know you've got an animal that isn't particularly tolerant of other animals, don't put them through that stress. But apparently this was a cat that was very tolerant mm -hmm. of dogs, and we love to see that. That's great. Yeah, she's bring actually... She, she does a lot of work with Paul's Therapy Dogs. Tink Earbell, she, she's, uh, oh. so she's, she's our mascot. She's Paul's Therapy Dogs mascot. <laughs> that she'll be great. sitting in the kiss, kissing booth, too. Okay. And only with rescues would you have a cat be the mascot. <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, if we don't run out of time, maybe you'll get called to give me a kiss today. You think you'll do it for camera? I think so. All I right. think so. But one more question for you, Joanne. Yes. You participated in last year's walk. What and did you get out of the walk? from animals, what, how, what benefits? Well, um, it's kind of like a combination of, of, of feelings. It's the uh, excitement of having all those people come together and working towards a common cause, but it's also just meeting new people and getting a, finding a new friend. And uh, any time that someone can learn more about the Greyhounds, I'm happy. So it's like a good feeling all over. Well, thanks for coming, and good luck at the event. Thanks, Claudia. Thanks. Thank you. And we will see you next time on Leesburg's Parks and Recreation Show.